Hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In today's episode of Math Mondays, we are continuing our exploration of machine learning. Yay! So we are deep into logistic regression. This is part four of our series on logistic regression. And as a reminder, we are doing data that has uh, two types of values. It can either be one or zero, or maybe it's on or off, or maybe it's true or false. We are using a one and a zero to represent our binary data, which only has two choices and two choices only. In this episode, we are going to build on what we did in part three, and we're going to figure out a full definition for the cost function for logistic regression. And then we will look at how to minimize our cost function, basically the difference between our predicted values from our machine learning algorithm and the actual expected values. And we'll look at some pseudocode at the very end so that you can see how to implement gradient descent. All right, here we go. Okay, so last time we ended up with a general formula for the cost function, but we didn't totally finish it because our cost function is a sum and sort of a fancy average over all of our data. And if you remember, we ended up with um, kind of a, uh, a separated formula. I always want to call it a stepwise function, but it's not quite right. Um, but a function with brackets for both two different cases for y equals one and y equals zero. So we're going to take that and merge it into one function. Um, so, uh, our cost function, j of theta, oop, that's a little theta, oop, that's a little too high, I'm going to run into this and stuff. So our cost function, j of theta, is a fancy average, so you divide by the total number of things in your data set, um, number of training examples. Um, we run from i equals 1 to the last training example, and I'm going to just use a placeholder. So we have a, we are summing over the cost function, which is a, a function of our hypothesis function, what our machine learning algorithm is using to predict new values, um, and our actual predicted values. So cost function is the difference between actual value and predicted value. And so last time we figured out that this um, for logistic regression, when we're dealing with the sigmoid function, um, we can use a formula of negative log of our hypothesis function for y equals one and negative log of one minus our hypothesis function for y, whoops, for y equals zero. But how do we shove this into a sum? Let's smush it into one big long equation. Yes, we can do that. So this is actually a really cool challenge to try for yourself. So if you're feeling particularly spunky today and capable, I really encourage you to try taking these two pieces and writing a single equation that will result in the same outcomes for these two scenarios. So pause the video if you're feeling up to that challenge and all of you are totally capable of doing this. And it's always worth trying, even if you're not sure that you can tackle it appropriately, totally fine. Um, I find when I mess things up, I actually remember them the correct way more. So making mistakes is good for us as long as we learn from them. Okay, so enough preamble, uh, let's do that and then we'll work through it and I'll show you how to check, check your, um, your equations. Okay, so if we smush these into one single equation, uh, we want to think about these two scenarios and basically for the case of y equals 1, we will want to end up with just this term here, and in the case of y equals 0, we want to end up with just this bottom term here. Um, so we can write our cost function h theta of x and y as the following. Basically, we just use factors of y to help us get what we want. So, um, a factor of negative y times log h theta of x, and then we're going to minus a factor of 1 minus y, and when we check, if it's not totally obvious, when we check, we will see why this is helpful, and we're going to multiply that by this bottom function here, 1 minus h theta of x. Boom! 
Okay, so we have our one big long equation. So we have two cases, right? So if we have y equals one, then this top or this first part right here just turns into negative log h theta of x. And we have a minus one minus one. Hey, one minus one is zero. So this second piece goes away. Yay, so we have a minus zero. What's up? So we end up with, we're gonna use colors. Hey, look at that, it's the same. Check for y equals one. Okay, but we gotta check our second case for y equals zero. What's up? Okay, y equals zero. So we plug in y equals zero. The first term goes away because we zero times log is just zero and we end up with um, negative one minus zero. One minus zero is one, so we end up with a negative one. So negative log of one minus h theta of x. What's up? Yes, so that's the same. We're gonna use yellow this time. Woo, it's the same. All right, so let's take this and plug it up here. Um, so I'm just gonna do this and I hope that it fits. Haha. <laughs> okay, um, so we have, we're gonna have some superscripts here to let us know that we have to sum over all of our data. So we have a big bracket. We have y, superscript i, times log h x to the i. I guess I should put a little theta there. Um, and then we have a minus, one minus y, superscript i, because it's another data point. We've got to sum over all of those. And then times log of one minus h theta of x again, superscript, because that's another that's our data point um, in a big bracket. Yeah, what's up? Did I do that right? Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so that is our cost function for logistic regression with binary data or data with two types of values. Yay, look at us in our brains doing some cool stuff. Okay, now we actually have to find the best cost function, basically, how do we get the most accurate output from our machine learning algorithm? Well, we want our hypothesis function, our guess, and the actual value to be as close together as possible, right? And since our cost function is a measure of how far apart they are, we got to minimize them. I'm going to just keep reiterating this point because that's really the foundation of machine learning. Um, Okay, so we need to find our parameters of theta, and to do that, we want to minimize our cost function. So here's kind of like a pseudocode way of writing it, or mathy way of writing it. Um, so we want to minimize the cost function, um, which we are going to do so by picking or finding different parameters of theta. And just like we've done before, we're going to use gradient descent. Yay! All right. Do you remember what gradient descent is? It's been a hot second. Da, 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 da. It is basically a, well, just taking a derivative because if you have a curve like this, taking the derivative of that will give you, um, at a point, it will give you the slope of that point. And if, as the slope gets smaller, so as you go down, do, 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 you're like, so this is point one, this is gonna be point two, and then if you're at the bottom, your line is flat. What's up? Um, so the derivative of a flat line is just zero. So partial derivatives can help us figure out the slope of our curve. And therefore, um, if we have minimized our cost function. Okay, so here's some pseudocode. To do this, we are going to repeat the following little bracket to be like, this is our code, yay. Um, so we have uh, one of our parameters, theta of j, and we are going to update it like this. this might, should hopefully be familiar if you've watched the previous machine learning videos on gradient descent. So we have our learning rate alpha, which is one of the things that we can choose or tune, quote unquote, and we're gonna take the derivative of our cost function with respect to that uh, parameter. We're gonna take the uh, partial derivative of the whole thing, the whole cost function. Um, and so we want to simultaneously update 
all of the parameters, all of them. So all of the theta j's. If you have two parameters, like you have a straight line, you're going to update, um, well, I guess previously, if you have two parameters, um, in this case, it's not going to be a straight line. It's going to be a sigmoid function, but it will stretch or shrink or um, change the slope of your sigmoid function. Um, so if you have just two of them, then you update both at the same time. If you have five of them, then you update all five at the same time. So what in the world is this? <gasps> partial! Yay! Partial! So fun! So let's work through that. The partial of our cost function with respect to parameter. So here is our cost function. So we're just going to take the partial derivative of this. I know it seems a little daunting, but remember there's a lot of folks that have done work before we came along. Let's use their work, right? So we can look up how to do the derivative of a log. Oh, I guess, nope, but I am missing one here. Okay, cool. <laughs> miss, miss those types of things because I go so fast, I have fun. Um, okay, so partial derivative, that's a funky summation sign, but I'll take it. Okay, so from i equals one to m, um, and so the partial derivative is going to be h theta of x to the i bracket, parentheses, minus y to the i, well, not to the i, but it's the ith y value of our data set, times uh, the jth, jth component of uh, the jth x. Okay, um, so then we just plug this in to our pseudocode and we repeat. So let's say we have n features, um, then our theta matrix is gonna look like uh, theta zero, theta one, and theta n. So um, this actually looks a lot like our linear regression, but it's not because our hypothesis function is a sigmoid function. So let's end with some pseudocode and I'll give you a little bit of a tip on how to implement this in your code. Um, so rather than a for loop, we should use a vectorized format Okay, so I'm gonna use some purple here so that you know that this is uh, your pseudocode. Okay, so your hypothesis function, hey libraries, you can just pull in the sigmoid function from a library and you have uh, your data set X, holy smokes, that's a funny X. Okay, let's try this, there we go. This is uh, your vector data set X times your parameter uh, vector Actually, X is probably a matrix and not just a vector. It's fine. Um, times your vector uh, parameters, theta. This is really just to note that these are not one value, right? This X represents a bunch of different values in a matrix. Like, let's say it's A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I was like, what comes after F? I forgot how to do the alphabet. I am in number land. Um, okay, so you define your hypothesis function. You define your cost function, which would be 1 over M. And since we're doing vectors, the cool thing about vector multiplication or matrix multiplication is that you don't need a sum because you just go bloop and it, it does it all simultaneously. Um, it's hard to do on paper, but a computer can do it a lot faster. Technically, the computer is kind of doing the same thing. It's going each element by element, but it does it so fast uh, that we can think of it as instantaneous. Um, so the sum, in other words, is inherent in... Uh, matrix and vector implementation. So then we have the log times h, and where h is defined as this function, 
minus one minus y. It's going to be the transpose of that because um, again, y is going to be a vector, so we got to make it long instead of tall. It's a technical term. Um, times one minus h, and I think I need another thing there. Okay, cool. And then finally, you define your parameter update method, which is going to be your vector parameter minus the learning rate. And the m comes from your uh, partial derivative right there. Bloop, bloop. And then you multiply it by your data set matrix, by the transpose of your data set matrix, and your sigmoid function, that's what this is, g of x times theta, and minus your y vector. Okay, so uh, this is the general formula. This is the partial of the cost function, which you plug into that general formula. And this is how you implement it with vectors in pseudocode. Don't do a for loop because you're not going to update your parameters simultaneously. And that's really, really important um, because otherwise uh, you kind of undo uh, what you have done. And it, you may not get a min you, you probably will not get the minimum of the cost function. Okay. Cool. So in the next video, we are going to tackle advanced optimization because as you probably noticed, this takes a while. So there's some sneaky tricks that we can do to speed up this process. Please let me know if you have any questions about the cost function or gradient descent or logistic regression. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this and you like my channel, please do the things of liking and subscribing because it motivates me and uh, it means that I'll keep doing these videos um, or whatever. Okay, thank you for bearing with me as I do the spiel. Cool, all right, I will see you next time and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye!